which outlines uh, the whole set of email conversations in which at no time does he say that the spherical phenomena is not on the tape. What he does, does is basically comment accepting the premise. Do the, do the emails discuss both phenomena or just no. the spheres? No, that's the interesting thing. We decided that, you know, that it would be better to to continue our work which is which is massive. I have massive amounts from every flight of of these spherical uh, phenomena. I have examples of these things uh, 300 miles away, uh, close to the ship. But, so I feel there's enough there to, uh, to, to I didn't want to freak out the uh, ask, you, know, you felt that there might have been a bit much. <laughs> Well, to, I, to I'd already, all I'd already uh, seen Professor Weinberg's reaction, and you really have to be right with them to hold their hand. And I just felt that he might st stop the emails. We were absolutely knocked out that this man started talking to us. It was the first time that I've ever heard of a senior Major League JPL NASA player literally discussing what is on the tapes. It's an example of the tether, which is a a 12-mile long uh, electrical, $100 million satellite controlling uh, electrical... An electrical experiment. Yes, I'm not a scientist, I apologize for that, but, uh, you know, I'll get you these details. But they... and this tether, um, they are busy showing us from the moment it broke to the moment it's 300 miles away. And at every point... It broke? Yes, mysteriously it broke just in the right place. If it broke a little bit too close to the shuttle, it would have taken the shuttle out. If it had broken a little further on, it would have take, maybe destroyed the wing or something, you know? Because you hear the astronauts say, well, it couldn't have happened in a better place. <laughs> and then, um, just to continue uh, on, on the uh, uh, distance, as the, these things started swarming it, and, and as this thing drifted away, they're continually showing us, or NASA, I guess, you know, through the downlink, the, this hundred million dollar satellite. And the phenomena followed the satellite. This is the second, the, yeah, the, the, the spherical, spherical phenomena. The spherical phenomena. And um, Are NASA commenting on, on these things as no, this is happening? No, oh, at one point they asked, and the astronaut says, well, it's a little bit of debris or something, like you'd think you'd know, that follows us around, sort of. That's, you know, it wasn't like, oh, this is this, and then they dropped it. There's, there's a few of these things in the, in the, the uh, footage, or are there, I, I are there a lot of them? There's more than a lot. <laughs> if you've ever seen a hornet's nest after you've thrown a rock at it, you know, that's what it's like. And how do you count the hornets? So I'm, they're all going in different directions. And I use tricks like fast forward because when you go in fast forward, if they're all stars, they all go in the same direction. You know, these things are all sure. moving. But what was very interesting is they're saying, how far is the tether? Well, the tether is now a hundred miles. And, and they zoom with their incredible zoom in on it. And you see some of these, these uh, spheres in front of the tether and some of absolutely clearly no problem at all they're behind the tether and if the tether's 12 miles and these are half the size of the tether going behind it at 100 miles away they're not specks of ice well even for me i'm uh, i find it hard to believe that they could be crystals then if yeah if but, but again that. i'm merely saying that you know i'd, I'd like uh, that that i'm just saying what they can't be and, and the, I've never heard of a, of a, a six-mile ice crystal that spotted crystal clear a hundred miles away, you know, etc. So um, there's there's hundreds of those examples. Um, they, then they've called them on the different videos. One time they said they were shooting stars and meteors. Then the same phenomenon appears on the next flight, and it's ice crystals. And then the next phenomenon appears on the next flight, and it's debris. You see, you see what I mean? They've already established it on STS 70 something that it's. That it's I, I that seem it's to remember shooting, something about fireflies at one stage from a stars. long time ago. I believe this uh, spherical phenomena first appeared to John Glenn uh, as early as 1962. And um, 
he did, and, and it continued. We have documentation uh, from various publications that shows that they uh, know clearly. They, they didn't have an answer for three to four space flights. They had an answer to what, you know, the blue haze around the Earth is. You know, it's, uh, they had an answer to just about everything else. But there's this very interesting thing about three or four flights in where it says, John Glenn's fireflies spotted over Perth. They're still calling them John Glenn's fireflies. And we have an astronaut making the comment on the 25th anniversary of the moon flight. He says, 